Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. This lecture is a lab demo where I'll compare our distance vector and our link state routing protocols. So it's the same lab topology we've been using for the last few demos. I've got routers R1 to R5, and this is continuing on from the last demo where we already had RIP set up and configured. So let's check that. So I'll go on to R1 here. Now the command to check which routing protocols are running is show IP protocols. So I do that, you can have multiple routing protocols running on the same router, but it's usually not a good idea to do that. Here I can see that the routing protocol, I'm only running one and it is RIP. To check the configuration, I could do a show run and then scroll all the way through my configuration until I get to the RIP section. But you see here, even on a router without much config like the one I have here, it can be a bit inconvenient to find the section. So a couple of easier ways of doing this, I can do a show run and then use the pipe symbol and then say section RIP and it will just show me that part of the running config so it's a, a lot more convenient another way you can do it is show run and then pipe it and say begin rip and it will begin the running config output where it sees that string of rip so that will take me to the correct place as well so you can see here i've got rip configured on here and to see the information that was received from rip I can do a show IP RIP database and that will show me all the routes that were learned from the neighbors. So with our routing protocols, there's really three things that happen. The routers will form an adjacency with each other. I'll talk about that more later. They then will exchange routes with each other, which will go into the routing protocol database. And then the best routes will make it into the routing table. And to view, to show IP RIP database is how I can see the database. To see the routes that are best that made it into the routing table, I can do a show IP route and I can see my RIP routes in there. Okay, so if I scroll back a little, you can see with the show IP RIP database, remember RIP was a distance vector routing protocol. It uses routing by rumor, so I just get information from neighbors as far as the neighbor's point of view is concerned. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is to configure OSPF on here. So I'll go to global configuration. Again, don't worry too much about the config yet because we'll cover this in more detail when we get to the OSPF section. I'm gonna say router OSPF one and then network is 10.0.0.0 and it uses a wildcard mask, which is the inverse of a subnet mask. So that is 0 0.255.255.255. That's equivalent to a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0, meaning I want to enable OSPF and all my interfaces, which have got an IP address that begins with 10. I don't care what the other octets are. And you see it's giving me the error message incomplete command because I forgot to specify the area. I'll say area zero. Don't worry about the areas yet. We'll cover that when we get to OSPF. Okay, so that was on R1. I need to do it on all of my other routers as well. So I'll do a config T on R2 and say router OSPF1 and then network 10.0.0.0 and 0.255.255.255 area 0. I'll also do it on R3. Let's do this quickly for you. Router OSPF1 
network 10.0.0.0.255.255.255 and r4 config t router ospf1 net 10.0.0.0 i can just put in the same command in every router because we've all got networks that begin with a 10 and remember to put the area in as well and just one more to do so r5 config t router ospf1 network 10.0.0.0.255.255.255 you remember in the last lab demo i used a text editor to copy and paste you can see the benefit of it there it was quicker when i used a text editor it's more convenient and i made a couple of typos like i did it again i keep forgetting to put the area in if you use um, a text editor that's another benefit that you're not going to make any errors you're not going to have any typos there Okay, so that is OSPF configured. I can see the OSPF adjacencies coming up. So now if on my router here, I do a show IP OSPF database. And I need to do this at the enable prompt or put the do in front. So I'll do that. You can see the difference is that I'm seeing link information in here. So the router here r5 it learns about all of the other routers in the area and it learns about all of the links on those routers as well and if i went on to r5 and did the same command on here as well a show ip ospf database it's going to have exactly the same information so it, not, it does not get updated from the neighbor routers point of view all of the states of all of the links of all of the routers in the network get shared the same between all of the routers in the area. So the routers have a more complete view of the network with our link state routing protocols. Okay, that was what I wanted to show you there. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.